It's finally happened. Bernie Sanders is no longer the left. Let that sink in for a second. Bernie Sanders, the guy who is considered to be a democratic socialist by many, social democrat by some, but is still considered to be far left in terms of, you know, our political parties. I wouldn't call him, uh, I wouldn't call him centrist. I think he is left, right? I wouldn't call him far left necessarily, but from our perspective, he's pretty far left. He is on the left. He, he, I think he calls himself a socialist. And uh, so I tweeted, honestly, I was waiting for Bernie to get tossed out of, quote, the left, and now it happened. Why did it happen? Because Bernie has refused to call for abolishing ICE. He won't do it. So naturally, we can see that uh, Bernie Sanders is no longer on the left. Let's look at this story. It's from the New Republic. His refusal to endorse ICE's abolition is the latest evidence that he's not the politician that many believe him to be. When CNN's Jake Tapper asked Bernie Sanders on Sunday if he wants to abolish ICE, the senator, the senator was uncharacteristically vague. I think that what we need is to create policies which deal with immigration in a rational way, and a rational way is not locking children up in detention centers or separating from their mothers. Okay, so far so good, right? He said what we need is, is Trump to sit down with members of Congress and work on a rational program which deals with a serious issue. And did, then what? Sanders wasn't the only presidential 20, uh, potential 2020 presidential candidate on Sunday to refuse to endorse the abolition of ICE. There's no question that we've got to critically re-examine ICE and its role and the way that is being administered and the work is uh, and the work it is doing. Kamala Harris of California said on NBC's Meet the Press, and we need to probably think about starting from scratch, but Sanders' reticence was more surprising to his supporters and other liberals. Come on, man, wrote Splinter News editor Jack Merkinson. Let's hope the next person who gets the chance asks him why he is still taking such a weak and morally timid position on ICE. Jeremy Scahill, co-founder of The Intercept, wrote, Sanders is choosing to be on the wrong side of history on this issue. My God. Bernie Sanders is wrong for not calling to abolish ICE. It is never good to idolize politicians. All of them need to be pressured. Yeah, there you go. This article goes on. Basically, look, Bernie Sanders is taking what I view as a rather logical position that abolishing ICE doesn't necessarily solve anything if, we, look, we still have to have some kind of immigration enforcement. If it's not ICE, it's INS. A lot of activists are claiming that ICE has only been around for 15 years. Sure, it was the Immigration and Nationalization Service before that. They changed the name and moved it to the Department of Homeland Security. It's not like we didn't have anything before that. So does it make sense to abolish it? In my opinion, no. I agree with Bernie Sanders. Yeah, the president should sit down with Congress and come up with a real plan to solve these problems. Abolishing ICE isn't gonna solve those problems. I'm not gonna do anything. So now we end up with the story and we end up with, <sighs> Bernie Sanders is not the left. And you know, when it comes to criticizing the far left, I often feel like as someone on the left myself, calling out the more extremists of my side of the aisle, I feel rather alone because as soon as you criticize the left, all of a sudden now you're alt-right or some other nonsense. But you know what? I'm not going to accuse Danny Rivero of being uh, far left or anything like that. Danny used to work at Fusion, and, and I worked at Fusion as well. Fusion was a woke news organization. F Fusion was far left, and, and Danny worked there much longer than I did. He tweeted, the far left is throwing even Bernie Sanders under the bus because he's now 100% in line with 100% of what they want. Newsflash, this is why Republicans win in the aggregate. I agree. You're not gonna get everything you want. You have to compromise in this country. Abolishing ICE is an extreme position. You know, it's like we've got two extremes in this country, build a wall or tear the borders down entirely. Bernie Sanders is saying, hey, maybe we should sit down and come up with a plan to solve immigration. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And the far left goes, how dare you, Bernie? How dare you? You are not the left. And here's, here's where it gets good. This guy, Dylan Petrahilos, replied to Danny saying, newsflash, constant concessions to the right gave us this hellscape. Hashtag centrists are trash. And when I first saw that, I was like, what, what does he mean by centrists are trash? So I responded with, Bernie is a centrist? And lo and behold, I was told, yes, he is a social democrat, which is part of the political center. Wow, and there you have it. Bernie Sanders has become a centrist. S Democratic socialist Bernie Sanders 
is a political, is in the political center. Danny responded with me with, of course he's not a centrist by American standards, but he's never actually wielded power and impacted much legislatively. What we're seeing now is democratic socialism leaving the room and outright communism entering the building. I don't think Danny is far left. I think he's just regular left and he's not a fusion anymore. But here we are. We've come to a point where Bernie Sanders, who is seen by many in the United States as being almost as left as the Democratic Party would probably go, he's a centrist now by, you know, who's this guy? Dylan Petrohilos. Former J-20 defendant, likes union, tired of this hellscape. Graphics at the next system, former Think Progress. Okay, well, Think Progress is, you know, it's a, it's a far left, you know, activist outlet. I don't know if you can call them news because they, you know, basically promote a, a political uh, ideology. But congratulations, everyone, we've made it. I'm, I'm, I, I, I gotta say, um, you know, to, to all those who are, who, are, who are here with me, you made it this far into seeing Bernie Sanders be considered a centrist. And, uh, wow. In the article it says, Sanders isn't just to the right of the average American socialist. He's to the right of Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the UK's Labour Party. While nationalization is a key pillar of the party's platform, it is ground, polit it is ground politicians in the United States still, still fear to tread. Ah, okay. In similar fashion, Sanders has yet to put forward a coherent leftist vision for foreign policy a needless failure considering socialism's historical commitment to the prosperity of working people around the world. Sanders is mostly an accurate diagnostician of American problems, and his prescriptions are simple ones. Tax the rich, expand healthcare, and pay people enough to feed their families. But these are radical positions only because the right wing has so successfully embedded hostility to welfare and government services in American political life. In previous eras, Sanders would have been a relatively mainstream politician. Bernie Sanders' socialism is Eisenhower's and FDR's world if Reagan had never happened. Economic security updated by the continuing revolutions in gender, cultural pluralism, and the struggle for racial justice. Jedediah Purdy wrote for the New Yorker, New Yorker in 2015 when Sanders was ascendant. Sanders points out cracks in the order of things, but seeks to patch up the cracks rather than change the order itself. That's a renovation, not a revolution. How did we go from Bernie Sanders is the, the politician, the, the, the democratic socialist that America needs, how did we go from 2008 where people were screaming Barack Obama was a socialist and the left screaming, no, he isn't, that's ridiculous, he's not a socialist. Socialists want to you know, they want to take the means of production for the working class to getting Bernie Sanders where they're like, yeah, democratic socialism, to Bernie Sanders is a centrist. He's to the right of the average American socialist. He is, Bernie Sanders is not the left. You know, if this is where the mainstream left is going, and I'm not saying it is, I think a lot of people on the left are gonna freak out when they're like, how do you throw Bernie Sanders under the, under the bus? But we're seeing all these protesters holding up signs saying no borders, abolish ICE. We're seeing Bernie Sanders be called a centrist. The left is backing itself into a corner. And the only thing that's going to happen as you push harder and harder against that wall on the left and you make the platform people can stand on smaller because you're endorsing further and further fringe ideas, the rest of those moderates are gonna fall off and they're gonna have to go somewhere else. Think about what is, a, what is your moderate liberal in this country supposed to do? Who do they vote for? Do they vote for the people who wanna abolish borders or do they vote for the guy who wants to build the wall? There really is no great position to be in when it comes to the American moderate liberal. There's nothing you can do. And things are getting more and more extreme, in my opinion. It won't be long before we start seeing more mainstream left call Bernie Sanders centrist or right wing or things like that. Coming out, you have to, you have to imagine, if you go on Twitter and you say something like, I don't think ICE should be abolished, you will be called alt-right. So let's start counting. How long will it be until Bernie Sanders is alt-right? I don't know if that'll, that, that'll ever actually happen, but I gotta say, people are crazy. Maybe what's gonna happen is the left will push so hard that it'll, it'll collapse. You know, the far left is, is pushing the platform 
they're smashing it. It's getting smaller and smaller, and there's so few people who can stand on such extreme positions. Maybe eventually people will just walk away because there'll be no one left to support the insanity. What's, what's a moderate supposed to do? The closest thing they've got to actually having borders, having immigration uh, you know, enforcement in this country is voting for a Republican. And who? The, I, I don't want to do that. I wouldn't do that because I, I, don't, I don't agree with their policies. But I'm not going to vote for somebody who wants to get rid of immigration enforcement and who wants to abolish borders. It's just not going to happen. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Just a couple quick videos for today. If you made it through these, I'm impressed. And I will see you tomorrow on my main channel at 4. And you can expect more of these videos. You know, I, I'm going to make these videos whenever I just see a story and want to talk about it. Adios.